What up citizens and welcome back to another beautiful day in La La Land. So today we have a huge surprise for you. What is it? The surprise is you guys are getting what you- Steak! <laughs> get the time out. <laughs> time out. We're gonna try this again. You guys are getting what you guys have been asking for. And you know what that is? Steak! It just, it just won't stop. You guys are getting a DNV La La Land cooking episode. Yay! And what's on the menu today? Steak! Steak. We are cooking a, as you can see, a Texas style tomahawk ribeye. What's that? Well, they're gonna see what it is, but it's a specific cut bone in long, long tomahawk. A lot of marbling, a lot of good fat, a lot of good lean meat, all intertwined in together. Also, Baby Lips is gonna be on the sides, and she's making what? Potatoes, broccolini, tumba. Potato lini. So if y'all don't if y'all don't know what potato lini is, potato Google lini. it. And I apologize because you're gonna Google it and you ain't gonna find nothing because we invented it here. Anyways, with that being said, guys. We invented it. We did invent it. That's dope. If y'all know somebody, have Guinness Book of Roll Record reach out and like call us. We invented broccolini. Uh, potato lady. Potato lady. We invented that, so you Google it. Anyways, with that being said, guys, welcome to our cooking special. Yay! <laughs> Action. Okay, guys. So for the potatoes and the broccoli, I'm gonna end up combining them, so it's gonna be like a potato and broccoli combination side dish. I'm gonna stick with a rosemary and thyme theme, mostly rosemary, and. The star, I guess, is this rosemary salt. I got it from Hep Salt Company. Somebody asked me where I get my seasoning, so I'm gonna try to start telling you guys. The website is www.hepsalt.com if you're interested. They have so many different flavors. And I think this little bag was five bucks and it used to be like full all the way to the top. Then I'm also gonna be using this rosemary and garlic grill seasoning. Black pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder. And then all these other seasonings are all Frontier Co-op. I don't know what their website is, but that's what they're from, so you could just Google it. Okay guys, I'm gonna blanch the potatoes in water and some kosher salt. Um, don't get freaked out by how much kosher salt I put in here. It's really not a big deal. It's mostly just going to further clean them. Um, but if you notice when I did the seasonings, there is no salt. So, all right, so I just turn this on high and then once it starts to boil, I'm going to stir it until the salt dissolves. I'm going to throw the potatoes in there for probably like five minutes and at the very end, I'll add the broccolini for like one minute, maybe two minutes, and then I'm gonna take it all out, dry it down, and then we'll season it up. So guys, as you can see, I've chopped these all into little one, little pieces, except for this one. And literally, I'm just cutting it lengthwise, and then across, just like that, and then I put it in the pile. Voila. Voila. <laughs> okay, and this is just broccolini that I chopped up. And what I did is cut off the very end of the stem and throw that out. And then for the thicker ones, I cut the stem in half. And then I just like chopped them all, chopped it all into little pieces. Just like this. <laughs> all right, guys. So after Veronica put that salt water in there, uh, that coarse salt, um, kosher salt, she actually is starting to let it come to a boil, as you can see. And... And... Just so you guys know, I tasted the water as I was going to judge how much water to put because you don't want it to taste like like sickening salt water. You just want it to have like the essence of salt, right? Um, because we are being careful about how much salt we take in because Veronica does not have time for swollen ankles. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real problem in this household, guys. <laughs> Hashtag swollen ankles. Okay, so I'm about to carefully place these potatoes in this water. Um, you know, a smart person would use a slotted spoon to put them in, but I'm just gonna use my hands and hope for the best. Oh my gosh. Um, just like so. See what I'm saying? 
Oh my, oh my goodness. Did I see that? <gasps> oh, oh. <gasps> it's the lava water! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> ah! If it happens enough, it doesn't hurt anymore. Ow! Oh! So you should use a slotted spoon for safety. All right. Once this is in here, I'm going to turn this down to like halfway between six and eight. I don't know. More like six. And then I'm going to set my timer for five minutes. And I set a timer for five minutes because I will forget. So if you are a person like me that will forget, just set a timer. It's just so much easier. Unless you then forget what the timer is beeping for and you can tone that out, which I also do. That's why I have Dustin. <laughs> nice. So, this ended up cooking for, I'm gonna say like seven minutes. Um, this is where like even cutting and cutting things the same size is key because some of them are like really ready and some of them are not so much, but that's okay because me and Dustin like different textures. So, now I'm gonna add the broccolini to this, like so. This is not going to stay in here for very long because I want it to stay crisp and Dustin likes it like that. <laughs> so I'm just gonna do this for like one minute. Okay guys, so this has literally been in here for like a minute and now I have my slotted spoon because I'm probably not gonna reach my bare hand into this pot to pull this stuff out. So I'm just gonna put it on a plate with a paper towel so it can dry. And it smells like steamed vegetables in here now. We gonna fix that. See, this one's like super done. That's okay. Cause we are gonna fix this right up. You guys are gonna see. But I know Dustin's mom is gonna be watching this. And if I didn't make a green vegetable, she would be telling him about. So. I made a green vegetable. Right, baby? Yes, you did. <laughs> did not know that was a motivation. <laughs> but so there that's you... what it looks like. Now we just gotta let it dry out. All right, guys, I'm about to season this up, but before I do, I wanna taste a little bit. Bam. <laughs> I know, you know, that I'm sensitive to flavor. But I'm going to tell you right now, putting your food in a little bit of salt water and just boiling it for a little bit already adds flavor. And that's the point, because we add flavor at every stage of cooking. That's what we do in this house. <laughs> Hold on one second. So, I am going to kind of roll this off of this paper towel so I don't rip the paper towel as I season it. I'm gonna season this up now, and then we're gonna saute it. So I'm gonna first throw some olive oil on this, like so. And okay, on the real though, the reason why I tasted it for real, for real, is just so I can get an idea of like, Make sure that I don't want to make this food salty like I was telling you guys. So I just want to keep myself in check when how what when I'm seasoning it. Um, and it's bomb. It's so bomb right now. It's so bomb. Okay, so I'm going to take this rosemary salt. And I'm just going to hit it with a little bit of this. And I want you guys to know that this salt is like really good salt. It's not like salty salt which I really like about it. It's more flavor than salty, but I still, you saw I'm like still being super careful. Then I'm gonna go in with this pepper. Okay, and now I'm gonna take some onion powder. And I gotta be careful, cause this comes out like pretty good. Oh my God, this is gonna be so good. I cannot wait to eat. Onion powder. 
okay? And then I'm gonna take this garlic powder. This is the one that comes out ham. Oh my God, it smells so good. It smells so good. Okay, and then I'm gonna take this. Now, the reason why I was really checking the salt is because this has salt in it too. So I just, you know, you don't wanna go crazy. Because you could always add salt, but it's hard to take it away. There we go. Now, this is ready for the pan. Now we have to prepare our, what do you call this? A skillet, a pot, a pan? Oh shoot, I put the wrong one. Um, oh, PS, preheat your oven. I put, I'm preheating mine to 400. It's like preheating right now. So, sorry, I, I should have told you guys that. But I low-key forgot, that's why mine's not preheated yet. So you wanna put some extra virgin olive oil. And then, this is something I forgot to tell you guys, red chili pepper flakes. You guys know I like the heat. So I, I pretty much, anytime I do this, I pretty much always put <laughs> red pepper flakes in my oil before I put the food in there because I like it to have a little fire. And Dustin likes it too. Okay. Now, we are going to put this in the pot. You see how it's like bubbling? That's what we want. We want this to bubble. So we're just gonna dump this in here. I know you guys hear it sizzling. And we're just gonna let this like, not fry, but I guess saute is the right word. Right, baby? Mm-hmm. And then I just kinda like scrape this in here. Those of you that don't watch us, please don't hate on the paper plate. That's just how I cook. <laughs> okay, and then as this kind of starts to saute, I'm going to like kind of mash some of these potatoes down just to give them different like textures and all that stuff. Is this enough seasoning? And just like mix it all up. Like so. Let's act it good and happy. And then this will just sit here for like two to three minutes. Okay, so now that it kind of looks like this, I'm gonna put it in the oven. And I changed my mind about the 400. I just put it on 350. And I want these to get like brown and crispy. So I'm just gonna slide it on in here. And I'll probably check it in 10 or 15 minutes or so. So what's going on guys? Today we have this huge massive lodge uh, cast iron and this is something that a lot of people that do steaks are like, oh man, don't put on a cast iron and throw it on the grill. Um, I'm going to do that cast iron because today we have that Texas Tomahawk steak which is going up and uh, really excited about it. We're going to put the cast iron on the grill but right now what we're doing inside is we are literally doing what is called oiling our pan so we put a little like olive oil right here um, or if you don't have olive oil vegetable oil peanut oil hell you can just throw grease on there and kind of like heat it up a little bit so it can kind of coat the pan and after it coats the pan it's going to be a nice sheen so that your steak doesn't stick when you put it on there at full heat so guys you are not black unless you have a random cup of fat next to your stove True story. <laughs> Hashtag black people problems. Okay guys, so the key thing in grilling a steak or essentially cooking how I'm cooking it is always make sure that you preheat your steak. Grill. <laughs> always make sure that you preheat your grill. So with that being said, um, here is la grill, okay? Fancy, you, fancy. Yeah, and your boy is about to get this joint going. So the Viking grills, they're really good grills. Push a little plug in right here, turn everything up to high heat. There we go. What's that beeping sound? That beeping sound is actually the little igniter in the back that starts all the fire. There we go. I don't think you guys can see that, but fire is starting. We could fill it. For sure. There we go. 
So guys, the whole point of turning this to high heat is you want this to be as hot as physically possible because that steak is going to cook very, very, very quick. It's almost like gonna like flash cook it so it seals in all those good juices because that's how we do it in Tejas. Rep my hood, baby, let's go. Rep it, baby. This recipe actually takes a little bit of prep. What I decided to do here was to encase all this flavor in a Ziploc bag, and I'm explain to you what I did, okay? Can you hold it up for us, Dustin? I, I got you. I got you. I don't know if you guys can see that, okay? Um, what I decided to do was I put the whole tomahawk ribeye inside here. Um, I put some olive oil so that it can kind of absorb the flavor from everything else I put in here. As you can see, I have literally, I have uh, shallots that I've cut up in so many small little pieces pop up pieces pieces. I have roasted garlic that's all in here. I have rosemary, I have thyme, and I let this sit uh, in the fridge for 24 hours. And what that is doing such a dear steak is like all of the olive oil is going to catch the flavor from the rosemary, it's gonna catch flavor from the shallots and the and the thyme and you know all the, the good garlic that we put in here and it's gonna essentially infuse the flavor of the ribeye so it's gonna soak into the fat so when you cook it it literally flavors itself. Um, you guys are welcome for this recipe because nobody knows this. I haven't even told Veronica but uh, best steak recipe ever. 24 hour literally like almost like a marinade of just fantastic roasted garlic, thyme, rosemary, um, shallots, and very, very great quality stock olive oil. So Dustin put the cast iron right on the grill. He's so good, and Ooh, and it's hot. And by the way, Dustin is gone. Salt Bay is here, guys. Oh my God. It's going down. <laughs> Okay, Salt Bay, talk dirty to us. What do you got? <laughs> All right, guys, so essentially what's happening here is I'm gonna take the steak, and you'll notice that I have like a bunch of rosemary, thyme, garlic, um, shallots that are all in here and that have been fusing and soaking in all that fat. And I'm going to literally scrape all that stuff off because you don't want any of that interrupting your sear. And I'm going to season it. That's gonna finish heating it, and then Salt Bay's gonna flop it down. So as you guys know, I was actually born in Germany. So I am drinking this Weinsteifen, which is the oldest, fun fact about this beer, it is the oldest beer in the world. Hold on, stop, let me get it. There we go, that's there it. There she go, there she go. This is the oldest beer in the world. This beer is literally a thousand years old. What? True story, yeah. It is the world's oldest beer, okay? Oh, I can't get it, guys. Oh, get it, get it, get it, get it. Get it. Anyways. Uh, Veronica's struggling right Sorry, now. Sorry guys, it's me filming. It's the world's oldest beer. And this wouldn't be a good grilling sesh if your boy didn't have something to drink. Toast. Cheers. Salt Bay, you look really, really <laughs> sexy. Subscribe, ladies. <laughs> All right. So guys, as you see, you literally have to like Low-key bring the homie out like this, because he is big. Okay? This is what happens when you get those Be careful with Texas it. tomahawks. So guys, once again, as you can see, do not get rid of all the uh, all the marinade here, because you're going to use this, okay? All this is going to play a key role in your movie, uh, The Great Steak Escape. You guys, it smells like out of this world. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So you want to get all those shallots off because at this point everything's been kind of pushed into the fat. So you want to get all the shallots and everything off um, because this will absolutely mess up your sear. You want all your steak to evenly be able to hit the cast iron to get that perfect crust that every steak deserves. This cow sacrificed his life and today we shall honor him. <sighs> okay guys, so anyways. These are the key ingredients that I'm using for this huge tomahawk, okay? Now, I know a lot of people at home might be cringing when they see how I season this, but mind your own damn business, first of all. Second of all, um, usually if it's just like a great steak that's been aged for like 45 days, all you need is salt and pepper. 
but I picked this bad boy up at Whole Foods, so it's not aged, and I'm gonna bring my own flavor to the table here, okay? So, I am using onion powder. Ding! Onion powder. Um, I am using black peppercorn, which is gonna create that crust. Ding! And there is no such thing as a great salt without kosher salt. You can't have a great steak, steak without kosher salt. This is the best salt for steak, and I'm about to do my seasoning, okay? So I'm gonna start off with some of that um, peppercorn. Give it that crust factor there. Now once again, you can't over season the steak because it's thick and you want that crust so you can actually taste it. It's the goal. Six and a half hours later. Alright guys, now we're going to get some of the onion powder to coat it. Um, since we're not searing up onions with it, we want it to taste like we're searing up onions with it. So, here goes nothing. Okay guys, so once again, you want to evenly coat this with salt. You cannot have enough salt, it is a thicker cut. So you got to remember that the flavor is going to be in the crust. Half of this stuff will fall off, half of this will cook into it, okay? Make sure you get all the stuff and then the sides. When you're out here in these streets. Oh my God. Salt Bay, baby, for life. Subscribe. <laughs> So I don't know if you can see that, but we're trying to get to optimal grilling heat at 400. Um, we are currently at like 375. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, we are coming along. I apologize if it's blurry. As soon as you get the steak all cooked and all cooked, already seasoned, completely seasoned to perfection to get that good crust, you're gonna get something called Kerry Gold, which is an Irish infused herb butter. It's uh, a it, okay there. Yeah, hold on, hold it in one. There you go. There you go. It's a garlic infused <laughs> herb butter, and this is what we're gonna put on our cast iron to get that great buttery, decadent garlic rosemary herb flavoring throughout. So once again, if you guys don't have this, um, it's totally cool. I think we got this at Whole Foods. Yeah. Um, you can use regular butter, um, specifically salted butter. Don't use unsalted butter. I'm all about that salted butter life. It creates more flavor. Um, and make sure you get real butter. There's a significant difference from like, I can't believe it's not butter to spending like an extra little bit on some butter, real butter. So anyways, it's gonna create a lot of flavor, herb, garlic flavor through Carrie's Gold, which is an Irish setup. You guys would truly like it. Uh, stay tuned, because it's about to work miracles on this Texas tomahawk. Essentially, with this being said, uh, you want to take this and cut it almost in like little cubes, okay? It's important to cut your stuff in little cubes. Look at the inside of that. Look at all that herb, butter, garlic, juicy flavorness, okay? So we're going to cut three little chunks that are all the same because once again, this is what we're going to base our uh, sauce in, that we're gonna cook our steak in, essentially. So anyways, with that being said, um, these are about a half an inch a piece that I'm cutting, and they look decadent. Now however, depending on how fast your steak is cooking, you may need to cook more, you may, you may need to cut more pieces. So FYI, just kind of keep an eye on your steak, you may need to use a lot more butter depending on the heat that you use. So open this up. And this is happening right here, okay? Cast iron is so damn hot. And I'm gonna get these small little chunks of herb butter that I put. Woo! Oh, it's so hot. It's so hot, guys. It's so hot. You need hot. another garlic butter. Yep, but that's why we have three. Remember, guys, cut it for the... There we go. I actually might need to use all three of them. Yeah. You guys can barely see, but that is what's happening right now. Okay. All right. So that herb butter smells fantastic. Now you're gonna get your big tomahawk over here, okay? We haven't forgot about him. You guys see this bad boy right here? Yeah, He's got about to meet his best friend. Look at that, guys. 
How long does it sear for? Now, since this is a bigger steak, it's going to take about a couple of minutes, um, pretty much to get that good golden crust that we want. However, we're going to sear it on one side for about three minutes straight, and then we're going to flip it over and do three minutes straight, and we're going to close it so it can cook in and conceal in all the flavors. Yummy. Now, if you guys remember about these babies, we're going to put these in here as well to add on flavor, okay? After you flip it or? After I flip it, at the end. Oh. Not now. Let it get a good crust, make sure all sides are down. Okay? Make sure all sides are down. Now, with the butter and the fat that's coming from the steak, you're about to get optimal flavor, guys. Optimal flavor. Essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to let it crust on one side. Then we're going to flip it over to another side and let it crust again. So it's crusted on both sides. We're going to add our kind of like marinade innards and then put it all there. Then we're going to close it and let the heat conceal cook it to what I like in steak, which is a perfect medium. I don't like rare. I don't like medium rare. I enjoy pink steak, just not bleeding. So I don't, I'm not about the bloody life, but I like pink steak. Okay, guys. So it's been a few minutes now. And that crust is wow. gorgeous. So we're going to flip it at this point. You guys see that crust. Wow. Once again, Food Network. If you're out there watching, holla at your boy. Cooking Channel. If you're out there watching, holla at your boy. Citizens, I know you're hitting that subscribe button. I know you're commenting on how good it looks. you damn right. It looks that good. So while that butter's setting in on the other side, getting that nice rich crust, make sure not to neglect the big homie up top because you definitely want, and I'm adding some more butter, you definitely want that flavor of the butter to kind of sit in and settle in on top so that that crust is all wet and juicy with flavor. Now the innards, reminder guys, you want to get those innards and you want to essentially put that on the side. See what I'm doing here? You want to put that in the side and let that flavor profile kind of cross over. You smell that? Oh my gosh. Do you guys smell that? Oh, you don't smell that. Damn. Once again, I'm going to put this baby on top so that flavor could drip in. The flavor profiles of this is on another level, by the way. If you guys could smell this, you would know what time it is. Moving it around. And last but not least, we're gonna put one more at the tip. Once again, it's your discretion, you guys don't have to. But for me, I think ah, I think I'm good. I'm putting that on top right there. Alright. So we're gonna go ahead and close this, and this will be here for about two or three more minutes after we go ahead and Fill that crust on in. What do you know about Texas tomahawk steak? Who said your boy can't cook? Go ahead and comment below. Let me know what you guys think about this. Hit that subscribe button and make sure to share this video to anybody that thinks that they know how to grill steak better than Dustin. We're gonna take this back home, back in the house. We're gonna let it rest for about five minutes. We're gonna cut it open and the feasting shall be gone. Pulling this bad boy off. Woo. Once again, notice that we're not using any form of like a anything to stab the meat. You never want to release any of the juices or all the juices. It's not what you want to do, guys, all right? And that is the steak. We're going to let that rest for about five minutes. We're going to take it home, cut it up, and grub. Hey, guys. So this is the finished product of this steak. We are absolutely excited to grub down on it. Cannot wait. 
it is going down in Flavortown. If you guys want to see more videos like this, make sure to hit that thumbs up. Make sure to comment, share, and subscribe. And let us know what's the next dish you want us to cook. Um, and we shall cook it. So, hella excited. Much love. If you guys like this new rollout series we're doing of DNB La La Land cooking, shine, shine some light on it, show some love, and uh, we will definitely return. All right, guys? Until tomorrow, peace. Hey. 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 Hey.